We're going via Zoom to Perth to catch up with the account director at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Her name is Eva Chai and she welcomes uh, us once again. Uh, I, I noticed that whenever I reach out to WA, unless you open the door, uh, we feel like outsiders, Eva. <laughs> Well, we are very lucky here today. So sunny, 24 degrees, just perfect. Stop bragging, all right? Stop bragging. I know you're in election mode and the McGovern government is you know, pumping up the rhetoric and making sure that everyone understands that he's doing the best he can to protect everybody. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what, tr what transpires over the next few weeks. Uh, let's talk about something though that you and I are very much involved in, and it is talking about a host of different issues that can impact on people and have impacted on people. COVID must have taken a fair hit at innovation. We talk about how important innovation is, especially in this new, brave new world of ours, 2021 and beyond. What did you know? What have you noticed? Has has COVID really made an impact on innovation? It certainly has. Now, the only thing I would agree with you was the statement you made earlier about how COVID has taken um, COVID has um, made a hit, or, or innovation has taken a hit yep, by yep. innovation uh, by COVID. I think that's what you said. Yep. Now, um, no, innovation hasn't taken a hit. What innovation has done is um, what COVID has done is actually brought innovation to the fore. Ah. Now. Ah. It's brought innovation to the whole four. Now, what people need to understand that innovation is not new. Innovation actually means a new product that has already been in the market. People might not know about it. It's not something that happens overnight. So the innovation is already there. If we take flexible working arrangement, for example, mm -hmm. it might happen overnight but it's the innovation that's already in place, that's already in the market, that will help people transfer to working um, from home in a much easier way. Uh, let, me, right? let, let me pose this question for you, and we've seen it across Australia. You say it hasn't impacted on innovation. In fact, it's acted as a bit of a catalyst and pushed it and promoted it, which is, which is fantastic. What I'm referring to though, is I've noticed that our great cities, whenever the lockdowns came, the workers were denied the opportunity to go to their offices and they had to start thinking outside the square. Uh, public transport for me is still a big question mark. And we need people back in their offices, maybe not everyone, not all the days, but we still need them back. And we still need people to get back into the cities. So again, how do we, get this thinking through and how do we make our public transport systems safer and more secure and give people the confidence to travel like they once did a couple of years ago? Yeah, absolutely. So it would be all those things that you need to do sensibly, you know, like social distancing, cleaning your hands, wearing masks, you know, if um, there is community transmission going on. But back to the point you made earlier about the impact on innovation. Um, with working from home, I recently did a poll on if innovation could talk. So this was on LinkedIn. We put up a poll and we asked people, what's the um, you know, flexible working arrangement like uh, for you? How is it impacting on innovation for you? Now, what surprised me was 87% of people say it actually has a positive impact on innovation. Working from home. 87% says it has got a positive impact on innovation. The other 6% says no impact. And the other 6% says negative impact. Okay. So really... Hmm. No, 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 the reason I ask that question is, or want to follow that up is, the 10% or so, or the less than 10%, I think it's about 6%, who said yes. they're affected, are they saying it because they're being denied the social uh, interaction that they're so accustomed to? being part of a team, being in, a, in an office that they can share and they can swap their war stories and everything else that goes along with it. Are they the ones we're talking about or is it a completely other set of uh, people that are with, uh, who are talking like that? So you're on the right track there, George, because neuroscience tells us that for people to feel um, engaged at work, Essentially, it boils down to two things. There's lots of lots of factors, but essentially, it boils down to two things. One is the sense of connection. Yep. 
right? And being able to connect it with uh, your colleagues because you go to the kitchen, you're making your coffee and you have that, those sort of water cooler conversation that helps with connection. Then the other thing is the sense of achievement. So that is actually in how you increase well-being at work too. If you feel like you're making a positive contribution, you feel happier, that increases your well-being at work too. That's a very interesting uh, uh, perspective that you've thrown on it. And it reminds me of the days when we lifted the, the, na the local news out of Adelaide and we started actually broadcasting it from Melbourne, which meant that the news team left Adelaide and went to Melbourne to do it. And in the first few months, we were denied the opportunity to see our colleagues. The only time we saw them when we were actually on air exchanging uh, conversation as we're doing right now. And it wasn't until they put in uh, new um, uh, intercoms that allowed us to reach out to them, uh, not via phone, but via a press button. And it wasn't until that was done that we actually felt that we were part of the same team. Because up until that time, we had to ring and you had to, go, you had to wait. And um, that was really unnerving. And you're right, it did play games on our mental health and our mental um, uh, confidence of, of actually understanding we live in that city, or we don't live in that city, but we work for that city. And I can remember later, when that te te technology proved to be successful, we rolled it out nationally and I was doing the news from Melbourne for the rest of Australia and even for Perth. That was interesting. There you go. Yeah. So it just gets to the point. Yeah, 100%. I but, agree. But, but it wasn't until I got to feel I, I was part of the team again that we got that, that confidence to continue to do what we were doing. So that's very important. Okay, so what's the what from that, what can do you deduce? What is the what are we going to take from that to go forward into the into the rest of twenty one and into twenty two, twenty three and beyond? Mm. Okay, so definitely what we are going to see is going to be this hybrid um, of people, uh, either working from home. Um, and also spending some time in the office. And recently, um, there's this company in um, Canada that did a global survey. And I think the, um, let me have a look. The results say that um, 72 is gonna be 72%, um, which is a hybrid of working from home and going into the office. Only 23% will be purely working from the office wow. and 5% purely working from home. Now, does that mean we that's have to... That's a global survey. Okay, if that's a very interesting survey. Do, do we deduce from that that we have to rearrange the, work, the way we do our offices, the way they look, the way they act, and, and they, the way they behave? Because if you're, if you're going to have vast, empty offices, that's not going to be beneficial to anyone. Yep, that's correct. Now, there is a product that um, is actually developed in Australia, so we can be very proud of that. It's by this company called Apollon that actually has got a platform that helps people communicate. Because remembering the whole sense of connection is about communication, and nowadays people are more used to communicating online, yep, right? Yep, it is much yep. more common. The whole thing, though, is how do you communicate in the right, so that people move in the right direction? So we all know that we are achieving the same common goal. They are all working towards something that, you know, there's a bigger picture for the organization. Sure, sure. So Epilon has come up with this platform that allows, you know, the message to be pushed out on a regular basis so that people can keep engaging. That's part of the connection. And also they can contribute, do the work that they still do and get that sense of achievement because they are doing something useful for the company. All right, let's, let's push that even further forward now. As an account director, uh, you have to liaise with your people at uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Do you have to change your thinking? Do you have to reach out to them more often, give them uh, more insight, more support? Uh, does it change the way that you actually do what you do? Uh, yes and no. What is really interesting is the firm did a survey recently um, across the firm about the culture, 
post-COVID, and 51% of people feel that the culture has actually improved as a result of COVID. Wow. And when you think about it, there is nothing like a crisis that brings people together. And I know this is not unique to PricewaterhouseCoopers. I was talking to a CEO of a hospital, you know, who pre-COVID was quite worried about the culture in the organization. And post-COVID, he says, it just happened. Everyone rallied together. They needed to fix, you know, this pandemic and they all just came together. Wow. Uh, what about the continuing uh, chance, though, as we've seen in Victoria, we've gone into a third snap lockdown and uh, uh, the, the impact on business has been horrendous. And what was even more galling was the government at the time chose to close down um, or, or introduce this five day uh, snap lockdown right in the midst of the one of the most important weekends for business and that is the Valentine's Day weekend. Couldn't they have held on, couldn't they have held on and done it two days later? Wouldn't that have been a more shrewd move when you consider the numbers? Look, you know, um, being in WA, I don't feel it's right to um, comment on what's going on in Victoria, even though I hear what you are saying. Yeah. You know, we are just very lucky in WA that after 10 months, you know, we had a snap lockdown after 10 months. So people are more okay with it. Whereas if you keep getting snap lockdown, that is just not going to be taken very well by businesses, by, um, you know, people on the street, because you are just being affected all the time. So what it is saying, you know, what we are thinking of really is going forward, people can actually work from anywhere as long as they are set up to succeed. Got it. Now, then the question comes down to whether or not the government and your company is setting you up to succeed. That's a different story. Now, are we seeing that flow on? Are we seeing companies making the changes? And are we seeing a discussion between governments and companies? Because so often that, that, uh, that byplay, that interplay is imperative to see the changes actually bear some fruit. Yeah, that's right. There's definitely a lot of engagement at the C-suite level with government, but this is a new thing for everyone. So CEOs, even CEOs are learning that um, they have to do things differently because net lockdowns just mean that businesses need to be more agile than ever before. And CEOs are actually acquiring new skills. And funny enough, or interesting enough, that could be CEOs, uh, more CEOs taking out med uh, meditation, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And we even, yeah. Well, it makes, it. it makes perfect sense because Zoom, which is what we're using at the moment, is a terrific platform, but it does have its limitations. And sometimes you, you want to jump through the, the screen and, and say to your work colleague or partner, hey, no, no, we need to do it this way. And so it's not, it's not perfect. It is a, a huge burn. It's actually, as you touched on earlier when we started the conversation, it has acted as a tremendous catalyst for change. But my God, it, it still has limitations. So uh, I can understand, well understand, businessmen and women saying, I need some meditation time. So you're saying to me, we're going to have to introduce them and incorporate them in our work days. Well, the CEOs are starting to do that. And you know what? We talked about neuroscience earlier. Yep. And neuroscience tells us that the brain needs to be distracted for aha moments to happen. All right, I like that. So we're going to distract people as often as we can. Uh, Eva Chai, thank you for joining us on The Informer. Look forward to catching up with you again. One of our regular contributors from Perth. We go there as often as we can via Zoom to talk to Eva Chai from PricewaterhouseCoopers. Thank you, Eva. All the very best. Always a pleasure, George. Take care. Good luck with the election. <laughs> Well, I'm sure um, um, the uh, Premier is uh, very comfortable with what's going to happen. So unless the COVID um, situation changes drastically over the next um, few weeks, he'll be all right. We live in he's, hope. Um, we live in hope. His approval, rating, his approval rating is at what, you know, anywhere between 81 to 89%. That's insane. Well, don't, don't make him Premier, just make him King. <laughs> Thank you. See you, George. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. That's either.